So, because I didn't install these trim pieces before assembling the tub portion, I'm running into an issue why I don't have the ability to install lengthwise and clamp down like I did on these edges. Also, if I want to attach these supports and I do the trim first, I would have to go through this and that. I'm gonna have to think about this. <clears throat> I don't know what the best option is. I just pre-drilled holes every eight inches. I also put in pre-drilled countersink holes at the ends of this trim board, one here and one at the end. I'm hoping that um, this will work. And then once I get the long piece trim in, I marked the places for that. So I'll pre-drill holes this way without countersinks, shine a light through, mark the holes on the underside, glue, screw up to hold these posts in place. And then once I'm back up here, I can hold it with my hands. I think this will work if knows. I'm learning as I go. It's in, it's far from perfect, as you can tell. There's some spaces, I just, this wall is far from being straight. It was the first, one of the first pieces I put together back when I had absolutely zero experience. Now I have a week experience. Um, but when I had this board pushed flush here, the backside was sticking out like a quarter inch. Now it's flush or pulled tight because I put a screw here and one at the end. And then under underneath, I did these screws to pull it down so that that sits tight, sucked it in. Um, it's starting to squeeze some glue out, which is good. I mean, the good news is that these will be hidden. You know, this will be the door frame here. So that won't be noticeable. I mean, it is what it is. This thing's not gonna be perfect. I've never done this before.
Okay, so I've been here all day, about five hours. I'm trying to do the curvature for the roof so that it sheds water in all directions as Endgame did. Originally when I did my 3D model, I made every single archway the same. Now, when I'm looking at Endgames, I realized that he didn't do everyone the same. If you look at his, you can see that back one is way more curved than this one. This, these first two have a flat spot and then they start going down. So my front one looks like his, but if I did them all the same, look how much curved that one is. So I looked at it a bunch, I played his video a bunch of times. I think this is the most curved. This is the second most curved. This is the third most curved, and this is the flattest one. So you have to, and this one's the highest because it needs to slope downwards to shed water this way and curve. So it's curving this way down to this corner. So once the plywood's on here, you have to imagine it's dipping this way, that way to that corner, and then these, the backside is going off the sides. So I'm trying to figure out, well then my first problem was I realized that these parts are all different. So I kind of eyeballed his and I did my own math. I'm working with five and a half inch boards here. So I made, in order to have, you know, the most curve in the back, I would have to have the shortest here. So for the back, I'm doing two inches before the curve starts. So that's giving me the biggest curve. Here, I think I'm gonna do, what I put, three inches. I'm doing two inches here, I wrote it down, I'll show you. So the back one, I will do most curve. This is number four, that's the cab side, two inches. Then the next one, two and a half inches. The least curve, I'm gonna do four inches. And then the front one, which you see there, the curve starts at three inches. So in order to get the curves for the rest of them, especially the back one, like that's an actual curve. This one, I cut straight lines. And if I need to, I can sand this corner to kind of round it because it's not that much of a curve, especially for the one behind it. I won't have to do that. But the back one, I needed to create a curve. So I figured that if I had a bendable piece of wood that was the length of my midpoint, I could put it the edge of it here and the edge of it here and then bow it out to get my curve. So now I can put this in here and kind of pinch them closer so that's being held. And I keep it so it's on those two points and then I trace the arch. I came over to the other side and then I drew the other one. And just by eyeballing it, it looks pretty damn quick, good. It looks pretty even on both sides. But I needed to know for sure, so I did a test. So here's six inches over, I make a little mark. I take my speed sewer down. We're at two and a half inches down. So at six inches over, I'm two and a half inches down on this side. Now I go over to this side, I go two and a half inches down, boom. Perfect.
she blows, eh? So we got, okay, so the problems I had yesterday were cutting these wall studs to the right height. Obviously, you know how I did my curves. Um, the back joist is the most curved. This has a two inch lap. The curve was started from, I found the midpoint at 38 and a half. And then I found the midpoint from that to the end. Then I found the next midpoint and then one more. And then I started the curve down to two inches. I did the same process for the next joist. That's two and a half inch curve. So it's a little less drastic. And then for the front two, I cut straight lines. I found the midpoint. Then I, from the end to the midpoint, I found the next midpoint. And then from that midpoint to the full, the first midpoint, I found that midpoint. And then I cut straight lines down to three and a half inches on this one and three inches on this one. So this is the most curved, second, least curved, third most curved. And the reason for that is that you want the water to be coming off these front corners. So having a more drastic curve in the front has the water coming off this way. As you can see, the roof curves, the water will go to the sides. Then this second joist is one inch taller than the front. So now I have the rain coming off this way and off the curve and then off the back into the sides and off the curve. I made cutting the wall studs yesterday. I realized that I needed to start with the front. My whole purpose of building this camper is that I would be able to work in it, meaning I need to be able to sit fully up and have a desk inside where I can work on my laptop. So in order to get a height, I'm 5'10". I determined that 60 inches at the apex would be big enough for me to sit right there and still have a little bit of headroom where my hat or my hair is not brushing against the roof. So from 60 inches to get 60 inches off of my tub, um, I'd have to, you have to look at my exact measurements, but if this is A stud, B stud, D stud, A stud, B stud, C stud, D stud, I called that F for some reason I'm overwhelmed. A was 38 and 5 eighths. That's the front. The next one was 39 and 5 eighths. C, the third one in is 34 and 5 eighths tall. There's my lap joint. D, the back corners are 27 and 5 eighths. You can see I made other cuts. Those boards are now being used as prop pieces. And then F's in the back ended up being 30 and 5 eighths. I'll post all of these in a written form so you can get my exact measurements. But here she is. I could cry, but I'm not going to because I still have a lot of work to do. But I, this thing's big and it's beautiful and I cannot wait to put the cedar siding on, install my windows. I'm Shoshugi banning that. I got that from a YouTube user named Road Soda. He did a micro camper that's beautiful and um, that's the next step for sure. All right.